Hey there, it's Crystal Gorinto, the founder of Heart Stories, and I am here with episode five of Sisters on Your Sofa. And today I'm here with my sisters, all three of my real life, real blood sisters, <laughs> and I am so excited to have them here to get to introduce them to you, each in their own element, um, on the Sisters on Your Sofa episode. So I wanna start with my oldest sister, Michelle. Hey, this everybody. is Michelle, like, I don't know how to point to <laughs> <laughs> in the screen. So Michelle's in the jean jacket. Uh, Michelle is not very much older, but the oldest of the four. <laughs> yes, yeah, not very much. Not very much. Just a couple minutes. Um, and she is the she's a wife and a mother of three grown children. She's a speaker. She's a podcaster, a founder, and the author of books, her most recent newest book called Family Shift that she'll get to tell us a little bit about today. We're so glad to have you here, Shell. Thank, Thank you for coming. so much. This is an honor. I love your podcast, Sisters on the Sofa show. This has been awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's fun to have you guys here. Um, wish, wish you were all actually on my sofa, but current situation keeps us on our own sofas. I'm so grateful that we can be here together, though. Him too. Um, and so next up, we have Kim, Kim Welch. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Kim, of course. Kim's also a, a wife and a mother of three. You'll, you'll find quickly I'm the only one who's not a mother of three. <laughs> but she's a wife, mother of three. She is a, a nurse injector. She's had 24 years experience as an injectable nurse. She's also an author, a speaker, and an internationally renowned trainer. Uh, so she's like the trainer of the trainers for uh, aesthetic injectables. So we're so glad to have you here. You obviously... One of the things that we were chatting about before we got on is Kim. Kim is the nurse in the family, so she's the nurse in the family. Like she's the one we all call if we have a sore throat, if we have that weird tickle that we think might be Rona. We call Kim. Yeah. Um, so welcome. We're glad you're here. You Thank are you. here to take care of us all through the call, right? I hope so. Thank you. She always has a plan and a purpose, and she's going to get. She's going to take care of us. That's right. Um, well, welcome. So glad to have you here. So and excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. It's really, it's so fun as I just look around to see all of your houses. Um, I was telling them also before when we, I was watching the Together at Home concert series and just how special and personal and unique this time is to get to see everybody in their own, not their office, not where they work, but like their home. So it's so neat. I love it. I love how each of you have your home represents your personality. It's so fun. <laughs> Um, so Heather, the baby sister, Heather, Heather Joy Othout, um, we're so glad to have you with us. Heather is also a wife and a mother of three, um, and Heather loves uh, helping others reach their full potential through coaching, health, and happiness, and she, you will see, Heather is the health and happiness cheerleader of the group. She is the one always rallying us to be our best selves and bringing the joy that is her very intentional, purposeful middle name. So welcome, Heather. So glad you're here. Yay, thank you. Thank you for having us. I'm so excited. So excited to have you. It's really, really fun. And Heather is probably the most professional Zoom user of the group. Right. She's been leading teams and coaching folks on Zoom for years back when I thought that it was very uncool and I did not know why she downloaded this big program on my computer. <laughs> One time, and now I'm like, oh, I wish I had had Heather teach me how to use Zoom all those years ago. So welcome, welcome, Zoom instructor to the group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad you're all here. So I'm going to kick us off and tell a fun story. I'm trying to think what story was I going to tell um, about about sisters and what it's been like to grow up with sisters. There's so many good ones. Um, one of the one of the good memories, and I'll show you this one. This we had talked about when we were growing up. We had this green motorhome that. I don't even know where it came from. They bought it, I'm sure used from somebody in conjunction with another family. We thought it would be a good idea to travel the world in a motorhome uh, with four girls who couldn't help or didn't help with any of it. Um, my poor parents. <laughs> but one of, one of the memories that I have is um, that we, we were getting a phone call. Somebody's ringing in. <laughs> Sounds just like being around the kitchen table at home. We talked about how we just want this to feel like it's a conversation around our family kitchen aisle and our kitchen table, and that is totally part of it. Some of <laughs> always ringing. So, um, but I do remember when we were kids, like we went on a one trip. We have so many good memories, of course, but we were on in the motorhome, 
And um, we had, I don't, I think we'd all kind of helped, but mom had made hamburgers and dad had grilled that. We were at some state park and we got all of these hamburgers finally, all, all the fixings and lettuce and cheese and buns and all the things. Dad had grilled the hamburgers and had them all on this platter. And as a kid, I must have been, I don't know, seven or eight. I don't remember that much about the process. But I remember the feeling that it had been stressful and we got to the table and we sat down and apparently we all sat down on the same side of the picnic table and the hamburgers went flying. And what I remember most is that dad was like, we are eating them anyway. Right. <laughs> Wipe it off. It was a little crunchy that night. <laughs> it was a little crunchy that night. Yes, that's what I was going to say. That's what I remember. I remember literally having gravel in the hamburger and we're like, just, just eat it and be quiet. <laughs> I'm sure we still have some of that with us today. That's what gave us like guts of steel. That's right. <laughs> Survive Corona. Um, anyway, but it's been good. It's been a lifetime of memories and obviously a lot of hormones and drama and all the things. But um, but it's good. It's been such a blessing. And I think for me personally, part of why I'm so passionate about heart stories and bringing women together because I know what it feels like to have sisters on my sofa. I know what it feels mm -hmm. like to have sisters to call who all are so different and have different, um, different advice and life experience and perspectives to bring to my problems and my challenges and in different ways of celebrating my joys. And so I'm just so grateful to get to share mine with you, but <laughs> also just that that's, I think that having these wonderful sisters is what has brought the passion for me to bring women together in, in on, honest, authentic, consistent ways um, because of what is in, in my own life. So, yay, I'm so glad you're all here. Okay, so I wanna start, let's let them get to know you guys a little bit more than just the gravel burgers. Um, let's, <laughs> let's start with Shell, if you would. So you are, I spoke about you being um, a speaker, an author, a founder, Tell us, let's start with founder. So what, where did you start? Well, actually it probably starts before that. You were, you were all of the, um, in all of the pageants, you were a speaker and uh, like, tell us kind of where you got your career started and then how that evolved as you got married and moved to Florida and all of that. Well, I studied music in school and um, I've been a worship leader for years. Yes. Um, and we, I married a guy Rodney from Texas, and so I moved to Dallas, Texas when I got married, and all of my sisters followed me to Dallas, yes. <laughs> yes. and then 20 years ago, we moved to Orlando, Florida, and left everybody, I and know. started a church in Orlando, Florida, and so I'm the only one that doesn't live there now, and so it's crazy, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah we started the church, and I, you know, kind of have worked through different positions. I've worn pretty much every hat. Um, but the thing I love the most is communicating. And yes. so I get opportunity to speak and we do a podcast for uh, families called Family Shift. And you mentioned our new book that just came out. So we're really passionate about helping families. We have three adult children and um, two are married and one is um, in college. So, uh, so tell us about, tell us about Family Shift. So I know that even when you met Rodney, Rodney was traveling and speaking and teaching on parenting even before he had kids. But this was a passion of Rodney's since the beginning. And obviously, you've been an incredibly passionate, patient, wonderful mother um, and raised incredible children. So mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us about the book. Like, how was the idea for the book birthed and then what you, what you teach in the book? Well, it, it was birthed out of Rodney's heart. Um, and then I, you know, I come along and kind of bring the, the mother's heart to it as yeah. well. But um, it's, it's uh, an acronym that's SHIFT that we put together and Rodney just wrote it out on a napkin one day. Mm -hmm. And it's really what we've been doing with our kids for 20 years or 24 yeah. years now. Um, but it's to start with the end in mind. Is the yeah. S, H is to hold to core values. Um, I is to have um, life-giving friendships and the T is to teach by example. Mm. And so it's, it's just the, like a little step, five-step process that we put mm. together to help parents just remember what's important and to live intentionally. Yes, it's so good. The I is intention, it is intention, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. good. I love it. I love, and I love how simple it is. It's so, 
um, like if you can't remember all of the details, you can remember that acronym for the shift. Because you talk about not wanting like for your families just to, it's just not, my words aren't gonna be right, but to float by or drift. Right. So to make this intentional shift, like to intentional families. You know what's so crazy is that um, in what we're, the world we're living in now, when we uh, wrote this book, it was everybody was so focused outward and drifting apart. Mm -hmm. And now you see people out, you know, on the streets as families walking in the neighborhood more so than ever. People mm -hmm. obviously sitting down to dinner together. And um, I think that pe this has um, just caused people to focus on what's really most important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like not giving us a choice. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get to focus on all the other busy places we used to be. Right. So, yeah. So we have to be careful to, to keep that, you know, yeah. as we go back to slowly going back to what is norm for our culture. Right. Keep mm -hmm. that important. Do you think that it's going to change that we've had enough uh, you know, for, I, I'm, I know that everybody's situation is different, right? Like the, some people are stuck in a, in a situation at home that's not good right now, but right. for those right. who, are, who are being brought back to the table, who are missing, do you feel like um, that we've gotten such a, like a good taste of it that we will change if, or do you, I mean, like, will reading your book, like what, um, I guess, what advice would you have for taking some of this intentionality, some of this time that we got together, what advice do you have for us to take it with us when things start to go back to normal. Well, living with greater intention is, you know, so important and starting with the end of mind. No, so knowing yes. really you've tasted, you know, yeah. having dinner around the table together as a family every single day, yeah. um, you know, and I think since we've tasted that, we can say now that's my goal. You know, yes. I start right. with the end of mind. This is where I want my family to be. I, I want this closeness. And like you said, you know, some people are going through a difficult time behind closed yeah. doors and, um, and they, they need to reach out, you know, and not be isolated, um, but insulate yourself with the right friends. Like yeah. what you talk about, Crystal, so important to reach out to a friend that, that can walk you through that. Yeah, that's so good. So true. And just so important right now for anybody who's feeling very alone. I know, I know in my own friend group and, and maybe even within our sisters in, to some extent, there's times when you feel like you don't want to bother people or you feel like you don't have, you don't know what to say, but I do think it's so important, especially now to reach out to people yes. and just say, I need a friend. And yes. you just, um, even don't know what it's going to be about. Right. That's so true. Well, thank you, Shell. And so you also, I want, I want to just touch on just because it relates so much to, to women who are specifically watching this is that you started this movement of women called She, Women and Girls. So tell us about your heart for that also. Yeah, that also is another acronym. We, we love acronyms. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, so She is S-H-E and S stands for strong. She's strong. And we just need to be reminded that that inside of us is strength. And, you know, I come from a very strong, uh, all of us from a very strong background of faith. And, um, you know, the, the, there's many things that the scripture talks about how we can be strong. Yes. And the H is honorable, uh, that she lives a life that is honorable and that she honors others. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. um, the E is extraordinary. I always say extraordinary. Yeah. I don't know if that's the way we said it growing up, but extraordinary. <laughs> I like um, it. Like extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. So we're yeah, it's just a little extra, <laughs> but we're we're not made to to just be ordinary. We're we're, right. we're extraordinary, and that's the way our God sees us. He sees us mm -hmm. as a masterpiece. We're the daughters of the King. Yeah. And and um, we, we need to be reminded of that and walk in that and, yeah. and set that up. That's so good. So you've just created this movement of women to remind them, to gather them, connect them, and remind them. Yes. Them. Yeah. We love honoring women and, um, you know, pointing out those that are living that kind of life. And, and um, because a lot of times women that are living that way don't get recognized. So yeah. uh, that's true. That's so good, Shell. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Um, okay, so Kim, would you feel comfortable going next and telling us? I would love to hear. So you are, you've been 24 years as an injectable nurse. You've been speaking and training and 
And of all of the sisters, you have this high, high standard for excellence. And I, I love to tell people, it's true. I mean, it's true. It always has been. You were my roommate in college when I was out. Woo-hoo! I'm like, mom, you were studying from when I left to when I got back and getting straight A's. And I was just barely hanging on by the hair of my chinny chin chin. <laughs> But I think, uh, but not, I think, I know that, that in your career and the business, this business that you started, that that has set you apart from every other, you know, injectable shop that pops up on the corner, given, you know, three units for 1099 or whatever the deal is, that you, you have a very high standard for excellence and training and education um, and proper technique and all of that. So tell us about how, I, I would love to hear how uh, Esperance got started for you, your business that you started, and um, and just sort of what that journey's been like and what you're doing, what you've done, let's say before quarantine, like what, what your business is like. Yeah, thank you. I uh, have been a nurse for a really long time and have done emergency room nursing, home health, all kinds of different nursing. And when I started having kids, I realized that I needed to find something that was a little more... Um, family friendly for me. So I uh, started talking with some of my girlfriends and really felt like aesthetics was a good combination for me of art and science together. And I've always had a passion for art and science. And so I really, once I stepped into that world, I felt like that's what I was made for. Mm -hmm. And I've really, really enjoyed it. I believe so much in what I'm doing and helping women to look their best on the outside. And so many of the conversations that I have with women are, I don't feel what's outside is not a true reflection of what's going on inside, or I want to feel, you know, better. And yet people think I'm angry all the time. And so I just, for me, as, as cheesy as that sounds, it's really been so wonderful for a, a business for me as a nurse that's been able to help women in their own lives as well. Yeah, I think even just hearing you say that, I'm reminded of a conversation that you and I've had privately. I don't know that we've ever had it publicly, but um, we've talked about as we grow older, how we work, you know, folks who are really working on their inner selves, like working with Heather and coaching on health and happiness, and we learn more how to keep our bodies healthy, and we've read so many books and have expanded our, our um worldviews and our understanding and empathy and kindness and we're working so hard on the insides of ourselves and all that time the outside is just naturally aging and and we're like feeling like a much more beautiful person on the inside and the outside isn't necessarily reflecting that and I think that you told me years ago that it's like the joy of your one of the joys of your job is to have a woman walk out feeling like she was feeling tired and haggard looking maybe on the outside. And then to, to see the look on her face when she feels like the outside finally reflects this woman that she's become on the inside. Absolutely. It's not, I think that that's been the beauty of it. Like we can't, if you come to, to, uh, you know, to find all of your insecurities in the outside, that's not, it's not going to happen. But if you've worked, like you have said, so many women have worked so hard on the outside that when they come to me, what fulfillment is that, that I can help you match that. So yes, absolutely. It's been yeah. a joy. And I started Esperance, which means hope in French. And I really struggled with what to name my clinic and my business because I really wanted to find something. I know it's a difficult word, but hopefully it, you know, elevates experience. And it's a beautiful yeah. word, but, and it really does have some meaning. We're all talking about our acronyms and meanings and yeah. clearly we all have some deep thoughts within us, but um, yeah. So hope is what Esperance means. And that's just what we wrote on the walls, you know, in the, in the clinic before we kind of redid it. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I came to give you a future and a hope. And yeah. that's what we want for all, every person that walks into the door is to feel like we've inspired them in some way to, um, you know, be their best selves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so good. I absolutely love it. And I do, I think that the point of clarification too, in addition to like, I mean, if there is an addition, like that's the whole, the whole shebang right there, but like <laughs> you won't walk into Esperance looking like a normal aging woman and walk out looking like you're trying to be 23 again. Like it, it right. that's not the goal. That's never been the goal. We're not going to walk out with like big fish lips. We're just going to look well rested and 
like like we're taking care of ourselves and like our skin just has a little plump like we're it's i think i think that people get worried about aesthetics and there's like a whole um <laughs> judgment on the field because so many people walk around with like big giant cheeks and big huge lips and you're like oh like you had what happened and that's never going to happen because you actually tell people no sometimes like no I know I you do, and I do pride myself on one of the characteristics of any good relationship, right, is the ability to listen. And yeah. so but I, I want to hear what my patients have to say before I share with them what I think. And they always want to know what I think, and I'm the professional and want to share that. But I have to hear what they want for themselves, and I have to pay attention to that. And I do think that that is what makes um, you know, a difference in this industry that can go wrong. So I, it's, it's been very important to me. And hopefully that is what has set me apart in the industry is that I've tried to really listen to my patients' goals and what they're looking for in themselves and really helping them understand, maybe they can't even articulate what they want, but helping them understand what it is that they need. Yes, like you, like you would never, the difference being that I might walk into another place and say, I want fuller lips and they'll say, okay, that'll be two syringes. And then right. like everybody who wants lips gets this. You would never do that. No, and that's the, that is exactly right. I'll say, well, what is it? Are lips your best feature? Well, right. what is it that's distracting me from your best feature then? We don't want to just keep accentuating your best feature. We've got to maybe tweak a few things around it to accentuate that you have great lips to begin with. Yeah. So I think it's just a different perspective and a shift in the symmetry and balance of someone's face. And But really at the end of the day, listening to what their goals are and really trying to pair that with uh, professionalism and you know education on my part. I've done years and years of education on, on all of those things. So being able to share that as well. I, well, and that's, that was actually the next thing I was going to say is not only that, but like your, your experience, you taking what they're saying they want and they think I want, I keep saying lips, but whatever it is, cheekbones or whatever that, you know, okay. And cause I remember you showing me that one of the first times, like when you were back working for someone else and you showed me a chart, like, this is what's happening to your face and this is what's going to happen in 10 years. And I was like, no, <laughs> all the fat pads are shrinking and like why it looks wrinkly down here is really something that's happening up here and like that that partnering of your of your expertise and your education with with listening and hearing what people what their goals are creates this beautiful magic of like it's a very natural looking beauty that comes from within i love it thank, thank you, you. Thank yeah you. thank you so tell us like if, if people want to find you, they can go to EsperanceAestheticWellness.com. They can probably right. just Google Kim Welch too, but Esperance, yeah. and we'll put all that, y'all will be tagged in the videos, so. Perfect. Yay! Yeah. And right now you are offering like at home, people can get products and everything even yeah. now. Yeah, we, you know, we have medical grade skincare that we offer and we're shipping for free right now. So it's been uh, very eye opening for me. I clearly can't inject people right now face to face or you know physically be with you but we can educate and we can give you some products that you can use at home that are better than Target you know yes. so a little bit stronger than Target <laughs> brand but you know we just want to help people because skin too is a huge part if you're doing injectables and not taking care of your skin then you're not you, your skin is the biggest organ you have on your body so yeah. you can not care for your skin like you do other things. I mean, you just have to really take care of it to make yourself look healthy and to be your best self is skincare. It starts with skincare. Yes. It's so good. Yeah. So good. Thank you. I love it. It's, 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 it's a beautiful. It's such, I love even just having, now we're going to get to Heather, who's going to be like a whole other facet in the stone. <laughs> well, it's like everybody has such a different, unique journey and perspective, obviously personality. Um, so thank you. And Heather, so Heather Joy, oh, welcome. So I, yes, I love your story, Heather. Um, I tell people often that I, I, if you had listened to me, I would hinder this beautiful journey. I would have hindered your beautiful journey. Um, so I'm glad that I gave you, I, you didn't listen to my bad advice. Um, but, but I, so Heather, you were a school teacher. You taught music and um, in, both in private school in Louisiana and then came to Texas. So tell us about that and then how you ended up doing what you do now. I want to hear all about it. I did. I joke with people all the time when they're like, you know, what did you teach? And I'm like, music, PE, first grade, second grade, third grade. I mean, you know, it's just nuts. When all the fun stuff. 
do what? I said all the fun stuff. Exactly, all the fun stuff. It was so fun. And, and that's another part of it. I always laugh. I'm like, when I see my kids and they're like, you're still my favorite teacher. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just hope you learned something. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't really know where all this places are on the map or whatever, but I know I loved you really well. <laughs> and that's what matters most. It's so good. Good. So it's really fun. But yes, yeah, so I taught um, for 13 years and then um, started having children and kept teaching because financially I needed to. Um, and we just were not in a place for me to be able to stay home. And um, But by the time I got pregnant with my third child, I just remember praying and begging the Lord. Um, oh my word, I hope I don't get emotional. To give me something that I could stay home with my kids because I was sick of someone else raising them. Mm -hmm. And um, this was my last child. You know, my husband and I had already decided if, if we were going to make this work, we could not have any more children. <laughs> so I wanted to be with them, you know. And um, so anyway, I just prayed. And that is when God brought Plexus into my life, which mm -hmm. is direct sales. And that was something that honestly, I did not think that I would ever do. I watched our mom growing up doing jewelry parties and Tupperware parties. And I remember running all over town, taking in people and my friends' moms and everything everybody's mom, we have to get everybody's mom to come and, you know, all the things. And I just was like, I'm not doing that. Um, but what I didn't realize was that it is absolutely the greatest journey for self growth mm -hmm. and, um, personal development and becoming all that you were created to be. And so selling is like a byproduct by far of what I get to do and pour into other people and the journey that I am on with um, now a, a team of amazing people and um, friendships that I would never had prior and mm -hmm. stepping into who I know God made me to be. Because mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, teaching children, it's one class of 20 to 25 children, depending on you know where you are, um, at every single year. And yes, you touch their parents by touching them and you have conferences and stuff like that. But but right now what I get to do is touch thousands of, of adult lives mm -hmm. um, through Zoom calls, through coaching and all of these things. And they get to be better parents yeah. for their children. And I would much rather them be better parents for their children than me being in a classroom trying to teach them where something is on the map that I don't really know myself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, so good, Heather. It's been, and it's just been amazing to watch your journey. Like you are a transformed woman. You are um, like physically. And also of course, uh, from the inside out, like, but let's start with the physical part. So you've personally like lost, how much weight have you lost on Plexus? Do you I know from me? I have, yes. I, when I started this journey, I was over 200 pounds and oh. I have lost 70 pounds wow. um, on this journey. And that's so, been a long time. How long has it been? It's been seven years. So it's about, if you average it out, it's about 10 pounds a year, which I tell people it hasn't really looked like 10 pounds a year. Um, but because it's been different and, you know, in the process, and I, I think this is huge for you to understand during quarantine, um, in the process, one of my children got type one diabetes um, and she, we were in the hospital and trying to move and there was so much there. Um, oh my word, I get emotional again. Um, so much there. And I gained some weight back and I was ashamed for a while. And then I realized this is just part of life. This is part of what happens. And I see all these people joking about gaining weight um, during quarantine. And I'm like, and if you do, it's okay. <laughs> it's really not the end of the world. And guess what? If you have your sanity and you are strong in who you are during all of this and you keep going, yes. keep waking up every day, yes. you're doing a great job. <laughs> so keep going. Don't worry about the extra weight right now, you know? Yeah. So anyway, all that to say, there was a part when I, it didn't look consistent 10 pounds a year because there's been um, that little tiny, tiny bit of, oh, and I put a little bit back on. Um, and then, and then I've lost it again. So, and then some, um, and yeah. I think it's important to realize like, like we were talking about earlier as women, we cannot beat ourselves up in that. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a part of me during that time that wanted to retreat. 
like, oh my word, I'm in health and wellness and I just gained weight. And I tell people, you know, this is how you can lose weight. Mm -hmm. And it felt like I was living a little bit of a lie when really that's not at all what it is. It's mm -hmm. called you're a woman with hormones going through a very emotional time in your life and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And everyone has that. And as long as you can embrace that and come out stronger, yeah, it's your story. And that's, I mean, so that's, that's actually the marriage of what, what I think is just so beautiful about this journey for you is the physical side. That's very obvious just from even just seeing a picture of you seven years ago and a picture of you right now, like you're <laughs> obviously physically in, in such a healthier place. And, um, but then, but then that inside part, the part of you that can stand up for yourself and say that, that like, no, I'm not going to be ashamed because I'm human. And this is what it's like to show up as a human and do the best I can. Um, and the fact that you get to train and coach other women to do that is just like, oh my gosh, like it, <laughs> makes me, it just makes me so happy and so proud of you and just so grateful that you chose. I'm now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you chose to take this plexus journey because it has transformed your life. Like I am your number one witness. Um, really, mm -hmm. it's been beautiful, beautiful to watch. So tell us about, so we know you get to, because it's a direct selling company, you get to mentor other people. Talk, talk to us about your products and like what you, like what are the things that you, these life-changing products that you sell and how they help help women. I mean, I know that part of the business is the, the coaching and the self-development, but you also have incredible products. <laughs> so I know, I know you can't tell us about all of them, but tell us maybe about a couple of your favorites. You know what? Um, it's funny. When I started, I thought it was a weight loss company. Um, and it's just not. It's a gut health company. And I did not realize that my gut was not healthy. And yeah. um, I think the really cool part about it is, is that through this journey, I've realized your gut will stop you from losing the weight. Mm -hmm. um, people will try to lose weight. And that is why they yo-yo. Um, unless there's like, you know, traumatic life events and things that are causing all kind of hormone imbalance, then that's a yeah. different story. Um, but, um, on a daily basis, you, you are going to yo-yo and have this, you know, oh, okay, I want to do this program and lose 20 pounds. And then all of a sudden I gained it back. And some, why is that? And, um, so what I found is when you get your gut healthy and your inside, which your gut is your second brain. So it's really important that it's healthy and it's strong um, and, and also to fight sickness, right? And to be able to have a better immune system. Um, but in doing that, I, I stopped the yo-yo. I started losing weight and I started feeling better and different aches and pains started going away. And all of these things started shifting. As Michelle was talking about in our life, this shift, a family shift and, and what we're feeling with the coronavirus and the shift in our nation, um, there's a shift that can happen in your body that if you don't get your gut healthy, you, you're going to yo-yo and you're not going to be able to be at a new level of health. And, and that's really what my goal is for people. Um, when people come to me and say, you know, no, I don't want to stop drinking, you know, X, Y, and Z, tea, coffee. I mean, coffee is fine, but you know, just different things I tell them, but are you willing to drink the water? Because your body needs the water, right? And if they're not, I don't, I don't really want to do much because the truth of it is there's things that your body has to have. So back to the gut, there, your gut has to be healthy. It's your second brain. And in order for your body to be balanced and stay at a really good place, you have to be able to have a good, healthy gut microbiome. So is that, that's what, so you're, I'm assuming the main products are it is. like, Oh yes. So like sorry. gut health. No, no, you're good. But and I think I take some of them, but tell tell everybody like what what do you have that if we're gonna just do one thing to take better care of our gut, what would we do? Um I would suggest the triplex, which is um you do take the triplex and um we have it's the slim drink which which targets um blood sugars and balancing blood sugars and also helps with gut health and immune boosting. Um the BioCleanse, which is a probiotic that is just to die for. And there is nothing better, on, in my opinion, um, as you say, Crystal, in my humble opinion. Yeah, um, humble opinion. <laughs> the BioCleanse, which helps to oxygenate your bloodstream and um, just to really get you feeling better and in a good place. Okay, so it's the Slim, the BioCleanse, bio and the ProBio. Pro -bio. Oh, it's okay. called the triplex. It's those okay. three together is a system that I love. 
Okay. That's awesome. That's amazing. And I just know, I mean, I see your stories, of course, like of all the people who, uh, whose lives have been changed from your products. It's really, it's really, really special. I don't think it's anything like the, the jewelry and Tupperware parties that mom used to do. <laughs> Well, and we don't have to do that anymore. I'm so thankful I don't have to run around town and drop stuff off. I mean, you know, our whole entire world has evolved. Yeah. Um, so they get to order online and we don't have to do all that anymore. It's amazing. It's so cool. So good. Um, okay, so I want to talk about, thank you, Heather. Um, yeah. I would love to hear what you guys, I mean, obviously, so we are um, filming this in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and We've um, not been able to hug each other or see or hug our friends. And it's, it's hard. Like we can, we all have our lashes on and our hair fixed, but this is not how we're looking on the daily right now. Um, this is not a true reflect, reflection of reality because life is really hard right now. And I was telling the sisters right before we got on that, like, I was actually texting one of my friends that I feel like, like I'll wake up in the morning and think it's going to be a great day. Like I got up early and I had my devotion and I'm feeling calm and peaceful. I'm going to go knock out a few things before the kids wake up. And then something just goes crazy. A hole gets punched in the wall or somebody throws something. I mean, like, it's, I don't know. I don't even know. A video I'm trying to make, like I went live on Instagram the other day and could not bring my guests on to save my life. <laughs> like, you know, just, just those kinds of things. But then it starts to like, it, it, it feels like quickly it spirals and you can't kind of, you can't leave the house and you can't go, kids don't go to school then and you get to start over. Like there's, it just keeps going. Um, but then sometimes also the day gets better. And I, I think um, one of the things I was telling a group of women that I was talking to earlier this week that I, um, I heard, it was actually Glenn Doyle who said, if you start start well and end well, that's like a good goal for parenting during coronavirus. Like like start the day off good and then let it all get crazy in the middle and just end it with that good night kiss and prayer that everything's going to be okay. That's um, good. And I feel like I'm really holding on to that because it's it is a seesaw of emotions right now. Um, so who who of you would like to talk about? maybe something hard or what's been hard for you and then how you're finding joy or courage or what you're doing with the fear like um just to talk briefly about your experience through this anybody i can talk for a second oh, about yeah. it um well it's been crazy we pastor a church you know yeah. and you cannot obviously meet in person right. Um, so our church has turned into, our, our home has turned into this studio <laughs> where there's recording equipment everywhere and I kind of like things in a row and it is not that way right now. And it has not been that way since day one of Corona. Um, so it's, it's been crazy just kind of learning this whole new world and it can get very tense. Yeah, you no, know, because I, I do. I like things in a row and I like my day to be in a row and I like my quiet time in, at this time and I like for it to be quiet at this time and that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> well, because you also, is Luke so long? Like you're. Yeah, so my son came home. Mm -hmm. uh, he's my youngest. He's not. <laughs> and he came home for the eternal spring break <laughs> so he never went back to school which was a blessing because he is amazing with technology and with video and with music and recording and yes thank you that's my there shows right behind the scenes living that's room behind the scenes yes oh, um, so i i took apart my bed, my guest bedroom, and this is now my little space that I have some peace and quiet. But um, so my, my son came home and that was a huge blessing. I mean, I would have never had this gift, you know, that yeah. time with him because he probably wouldn't have come home to stay this summer. He was gonna do an internship. So I'm having this amazing blessing, but <laughs> I live with very two very strong-willed men yeah very strong and i happen to be very strong-willed myself i don't know about the rest of us <laughs> i think you're looking at four very strong-willed women <laughs> yes, I, think. Yes, yes. I i just wanted to share because i was reading a scripture the other day and it just stood out to me and it said make allowance for others faults hmm. i'm like Yes. And what does it mean to make an allowance? You know, we grew up, we had an allowance. It mm -hmm. was something that was predetermined yeah. it was an amount that was set. And we knew going into the week, what our allowance was going to be. 
Yeah. And you, you predetermine that I'm going to give grace. So make allowance. Mm -hmm. And that, so, that so spoke good. so much to me because I have such expectations and, you know, uh, you cannot have expectations. You, you have to make allowance. Yeah. So, you know, give a, expect, we can't expect that people are not going to meet all of our expectations. Right. We can't expect that. <laughs> so yeah. I think that's helped me. Um, just to live with a little more grace, you know, yeah. and not, they're not going to be perfect. And there's going to get some heated moments and some very intense love and, and conversation. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's a kiss and a hug. I love you. I'm so thankful that you're here with me during that. Uh, oh, that's so good. That's so good. You'll have to give us that verse, the reference for that verse. Yes. Yeah, I mean, not right now. You can, we okay. can the comments and put it, we can add it to the caption, but um, okay. I love that. Make allowance for others' faults. It's so good. Mm -hmm. how it, that kind of answers all the questions I asked you. It's like the, it's what's been hard and in what can bring you joy or peace in the middle of it too, is having grace and empathy for others. It's so good. It's all our perspective. Everything yeah. is about perspective, the way we see things, you know? Yeah. So our pastor this morning, I thought it was so good. He talked about that before this time, we would always say, well, if I, if I wasn't so busy, I would do this. In wow. my other time, I would do this. And now that we have a little bit more time, are we doing the things that we said we weren't capable of doing? Right. And some of them, yes. You know, we cleaned out a couple <laughs> closets a week ago. And so some of those things, yes. But then, you know, Crystal, you asked, what are we maybe not giving ourselves permission to do? Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, during this time, my business has had, my whole mindset has had to shift. Like I am a clinical person that deals with patients uh, physically one-on-one. -on -one. So now what am I going to do? I'm not going to sit here and just clean my closets for, I don't even know how long. So what's, what's yeah. going now? So all I did immediately started thinking about, well, what mm -hmm. have I always said I wanted to do? I need to work on my social media. I need to, you know, work on some of these avenues on online that I haven't had time to do. But as you were speaking earlier, I was thinking, you said, uh, what are some of the things that to give yourself permission to do? And I have collected travel magazines for years and they're in big stacks and they just keep getting pushed from corner to corner because I never have a minute. And that is immediately what came to my mind. And I'm like, I'm going to give myself permission to look at those travel magazines. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I can't go anywhere, so I might as well just <laughs> take turn a out some pages. <laughs> Woo. Oh, awesome. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. The extreme board of travel. Like that's right. You want to go to every place. Right. Yeah, just <laughs> Zoom background. Yes. You can just, oh. Make some Zoom backgrounds. Yeah, you can just tear out the page and make it like your Zoom background. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I think I asked that question just because I think that it's so important to realize that we are so hard on ourselves. I know we've said that several times already, but that all of the pressure of like, at least for me to see all the moms who are making cookies and baking pies and doing this activity and putting eggs in the windows and going on an egg hunt. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even like keep my head screwed on straight. and you guys are on Pinterest all day. Like your son's hair. I mean, that is huge. I have envy of you doing an excellent job of bleach and shave. <laughs> that is talent. Okay, it is not. I don't think I can do it. It's done. <laughs> What's done is better than perfect, right? Oh, yeah. He's he the spots that I gave him. Oh. Never, he'll never forget. He'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, just like the gravel burgers. He'll That's never right. forget. <laughs> Oh, Rona hair. Yes, it's good. It's true. It is true. But I do, I do just think like giving us permission to be where we are and like, I love that you want to do the travel magazines and like now permission granted. So Thank great. you. Through all of the travel magazines. Thank mm -hmm. you. So great. So good. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would say um, one of my, there have been a lot of different things that have been crazy, um, obviously, but having been a teacher and then staying home and, you know, now I'm going to be a stay at home mom and work with my kids and just love them and whatever. And that was always a big joke. I'm like, I am the worst stay at home after school mom. I'm supposed to be a teacher. And like, you know, and I would judge myself for those things. So for me, it's actually been kind of interesting because I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is what I went to school for. 
I can't do right. this. <laughs> um, and so I pulled out all these things I should have gotten rid of a long time ago because I tend to be a little bit of a hoarder. And um, and I made a whole little classroom and, you know, we did it and we're doing it and it works. They're, you know, my two littles, they don't know how to do everything online. And um, they did some stuff online, but like the school was like, come pick up Chromebooks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what a Chromebook is. How do you use this? I mean, you know, so we're all trying to figure it out. And so there was some grace there. Um, there has been a lot of grace with my middle schooler because she has a 504 and different things that we need to be doing. And so the, the school would message me, are you following the 504? And I'm like, oh my gosh, if you message that to a normal parent, <laughs> if you didn't understand what the term 504 even meant, you know, it's just been funny to see like, Was oh she at God. the front of the room? I mean, is she, you know, far enough away? <laughs> exactly. Did she get back to time? <laughs> but it's been, it, but For all of you school superintendents, lots of grace. We love you. <laughs> lots of grace. Because that's well, that's the part that's so great is that they don't know what to do either. No, no. Is we all are like, oh, you're just it's like you just literally took all the eggs from the Easter basket and threw them up and everybody's like, oh, you know, <laughs> totally. everybody is. They were filled with confetti. <laughs> Exactly, oh the confetti eggs that are supposed to be fun. And I every year I'm like, I'll never buy those again because they all wham each other, you know, and everybody's screaming and crying by the end. And it was supposed to be a blast. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, yes. Yeah. That sounds cool. But my favorite, <laughs> it's just wild. There's all these things that you think are going to be so fun and turn out to be a little crazy. Um, but my favorite part of the journey, I have to say, so there, there's been the heart. There's been the whole like, wait, what? And I have to check myself on the daily. Like, they didn't mean to send that email because they don't even know what they're really doing. It's new uncharted territory. So I have to check my own self. Like, I'm doing what I can and I'm doing great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Even if they don't learn anything during this time, it's like I did when I taught school. I sure loved them. <laughs> what matters in my book is that we loved each other. Um, but my oldest, we, we now do pre-athletics together. So we go on walks together. And that has been like, I mean, I cannot even tell you. Um, that has been time that I just, as a 13-year-old child, I'm thinking, oh, my word. God could not have given me a more perfect time, a more perfect age. I mean, every single part of this has been amazing as far as that goes and I have cherished those moments with her and she's also stepped into something and I've had to let go of control but she stepped into who she really is supposed to be because she's like mom all those paintings from our old house they're in the attic somewhere and they're getting ruined and can we get them out and can I work on hanging those and she's for the whole weekend been upstairs hanging pictures that she painted oh, wow I mean, it's really been cool to experience like I had to let go of control going, okay, if they're not straight, if they're not where I would have put them, it's okay. They're mm -hmm. up and they're up because of Rona. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Rona. We should start a hashtag. Thank you, Rona. Thank you, Rona. <laughs> thank you, Rona. What are we thanking Rona for? So <laughs> Oh, I thank you all so much. I thank you, Rona, for this, for getting to do this. Like never in our lives have we ever all gotten on a video and talked and just told stories about our life before. Um, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to have each of you and grateful for your willingness to show up in my chaotic world that was not very well planned and organized and just say, okay, let's all get on. Put your eyelashes on. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Chris. Thank, thank you for what you're doing. You're making course. a huge difference for women, and thank yeah. you for stepping out and doing that. I know it's not always easy. Yeah. We're all proud of you, and we're proud thank to be your sister. Thank you. Thank Both you. Well, lots of virtual hugs and kisses. Love you guys. Yeah. Love you too. Love you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, everybody, tell us where we can find you. So, Kim, oh. please tell. You're at, where do they find you? Um, Kim? Kim? Sorry. Who did you go? Let's go show. Let's go show first and Kim. Okay. Um, so you can find our church at rethinklife.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Michelle Gage um, or Facebook and um, familyshift.com. You can find um, all kinds of information about our podcast there. So. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And Kim? 
I am Kimberly Welch on Instagram, Kim Masteller Welch on Facebook, and mm -hmm. Esperance Aesthetic Wellness dot com um and you know on facebook and instagram as well so yes. esperance spelled e-s-p-e-a-r-n-c-e -E -E. <laughs> esperance is beautiful i love it i love i do love that and it totally represents you kim i love yeah. that yes um just the elegance as you can tell by her background so yeah totally well awesome. this room needs a remodel but it was the best i could do so oh, it's beautiful <laughs> Love it. Um, and for me, Instagram is just Heather Othout. And um, I just realized I'm the only one with my last name not on here. So um, I oh, should have yeah. my last name in there. But it's Heather Othout. And then on Facebook, it's Heather Joy Othout. And um, mine is plexusbyheatherjoy.com. Perfect. And you have a group on Facebook that I only learned about recently. What is your group called if people want to join your group? Um, yeah, so it's Healthy Living, Happy Life. It's all just about um, healthy recipes and all kinds of amazing ways to stay healthy and to move your body and stuff like that. I also have an intermittent fasting. I've become huge into that. And so there's a thriving intermittent, thriving during intermittent fasting as well. That's amazing. Okay, awesome. All right, love you guys. Love, love you. Love you too. Bye, y'all.